Hi everyone, and welcome to another Civilization 6 Gathering Storm video. So, in this one, we are going to check out how good or how bad Hungary is. Hungary is actually going to be heavily dependent on the exact map and seed that you are playing on. Because you want to have at least some city-states in your general area, because of the Raven King ability. Because when Hungary levies troops from city-states, not only they are faster and stronger, they cost no gold or resources to upgrade. And also, when you levy troops from a city-state, you receive two envoys. Which means you can basically just buy envoys, even if you don't use the troops that you levy. You're effectively just buying envoys. He also gets Pearl of the Danube, which means you will have slightly less flexibility when it comes to settling your cities, at least as long as you want to take advantage of this. But you can get a major production bonus to both districts themselves and buildings within the districts. And then he also gets two unique cavalry units and one upgrades into the other. And he gets the thermal bath, which requires geothermal fissure. Geothermal fissures are fairly rare, but it's a nice building. So, let's get started, shall we? So, here we are. And we got foreign trade right away. Interesting. Let's check the continent lens. Well, there it is. That's a different continent right here. Apparently so. Baltica. Anyway, one interesting thing about Hungary is that a lot of the time when you start a game, it might be worth considering moving the settler. As in, more so than for other civilizations. If I settle on spot right here, for example, I will only have two tiles for districts that would benefit from Pearl of the Danube. But I could settle here instead, then harvest the wheat, and I would have three spots for Pearl of the Danube. And Pearl of the Danube is really powerful, because that's a 50% production bonus, not just for the district itself, but for all the buildings inside the district, including the late game ones, which require quite a lot of production. So it might be worth moving here, and then harvesting the wheat in the future. I think I'm going to do that. So, you know what, let's just do that. Why the heck not? We can do it. Alright, so our goal is going to be taking advantage of the Raven King as soon as possible to see how much of a boost it can give us in the early game. So, to that end, we need to find city-states. Oh, and here's a geothermal fissure, which we need for thermal bath. So, that might be our second city. Anyway, here's our capital. So now we will grab a scout to take a look around a little bit. Hopefully there are some city-states nearby. If we are the first ones to make contact with a city-state, we will get an envoy. And then we could get Amani to get two more envoys and become the suzerain right away. And there's a city-state, nice. Are we the first ones to make contact with it? Yes, we are, nice. We got a quest to get inspiration for state workforce. Okay, we are definitely going to do that. So that's pretty much a guaranteed second envoy, very nice. Alright, let's grab the goodie hat. We got a recon unit, good. Let's send him in the opposite direction. And here's the second city-state, Buenos Aires. And we got a quest. Construct an encampment. Okay, I might do that. We'll see about that. There's the slinger, and the scout is dead. Alright, so now we can get the builder. Let's do that. The Pantanal is the oh, most we got the Pantanal. It's a little bit far away, but it might be worth starting Your a city there. And Sweden is right next to it, apparently. Right. Okay, there's Sweden. And that gives us writing boost. Good. Alright, and here's Mali. Good. He's pretty close. Eh, not that close. Let's see if we can find a third city-state for the Eureka boost. Or rather, Inspiration boost. Okay, we got the third city-state. And that gives us Political Philosophy boost. And were we the first ones? Yep, we were the first ones. Now we got one envoy each in all of them. Alright, so I got my first settler, and I'm thinking I'm going to settle right here. Because that way, we can get the floodplains, and we can potentially harvest one or both wheat tiles 
and replace them with districts in the future. That way we would have three districts with Pearl of the Danube. There's also wine, but I'm not replacing wine. That would be silly. Yeah, I think this makes sense. We'll settle here. And there are a lot of floodplains in the area, so hopefully we'll be able to get some extra yields for those. Alright, so I'm on turn 52. I'm about to be the suzerain of Buenos Aires because I hired Amani and she will arrive there on the next turn. So then we can spend our money and levy the troops immediately. That will give us additional plus two envoys and whatever units Buenos Aires might have. And then I could use the units to attack Sweden. I could destroy the barbarian camp over here. I can do both. And another thing we could do is try to rush swordsmen, because we can upgrade city-state units with no gold or resource cost, which means I could turn them into swordsmen immediately, as in warriors, because I assume that's what they will have. That's mostly what city-states have at this stage of the game. So that could be a pretty good strategy. I think it's worth it. We do have some iron down here, which means I could get a settler and grab the iron right away for the boost because the iron mine is required to boost iron working, or I could research iron working the hard way, just without the boost. Also, we got another governor, I'm going to grab the educator, because with the second promotion we can get plus one science for each citizen in the city. I quite like that. We'll keep him in our capital. So, the builder is about to finish, we also got a major flood apparently, and there we go. We got Buenos Aires. We got four warriors in Buenos Aires. Okay, yes, so if we get iron working, we could get four swordsmen right away in Buenos Aires. That would actually be amazing. I think I'm going to do that. I might be able to just take a city from Sweden. That's definitely a possibility. As for the government, I will pick up oligarchy. That's more experience for our units and some combat bonuses. Now we can get production bonus towards settlers and plus two influence per turn towards envoys. I don't think we need discipline anymore. We should be fine without discipline. Let's take conscription and I will keep urban planning at least for now. Okay, sounds good to me and let's maybe get out of here. There's the trader, we can send him to Buenos Aires. That way we'll get road to our second city and then further towards Sweden. I like that. So there's currency boost and we'll get our own working in eight turns. And then we can levy the troops. Okay, let's levy the troops right now. That will be 160. And I don't think I can get another city-state. I'm pretty sure I cannot, not yet. Uh, actually... Oh yeah, we do have Antananarivo. I can do the same here. It won't be super useful, but we will get plus two envoys. It's 240 gold, that is quite a lot of gold. I think I'm still going to do it though. I mean, we get to keep them for 30 turns. That's more than enough time to move them towards Sweden. So I'm okay with this. And it will all be swordsmen, that's actually going to be pretty crazy. Okay, let's do it, it's fine. We need two more turns to finish iron working. This is actually going to be a little bit insane, I think. Because that's going to be a lot of swordsmen without having to spend gold for the upgrades. We do, however, want to kill that scout if at all possible. Alright then. And let's move. We need one more turn. Then we can upgrade the units. There's the settler and we'll send him south to secure the iron. And we can settle next to the volcano. Here we go. Also, plus one error score. And our next research should probably be something cheap. Uh, let's get currency. And also irrigation. We can grab irrigation. We need irrigation for the wine. So that's definitely a good idea. And now we can upgrade. So, just need to be inside the city-state territory. Like so. And that's zero everything. Here, we got a swordsman. And we also got a great person, a great scientist. Three random technologies from classical or medieval era. Yeah, that's actually fine. 
And that also gives us education boost. We can pop him right away. Uh, what did we get exactly? Let's take a look. Shipbuilding, mathematics and stirrups. Yep, that's not too bad. So, more upgrades. This is actually pretty crazy. Like, holy crap, this is the only way in the game to get this many swordsmen this quickly. Obviously, we will lose them after 30 turns, but holy crap, this is a lot of swordsmen. Imagine this city was a little bit closer to Sweden. I mean, it's already close enough, I think, seeing how we'll keep them for 30 turns. We can easily conquer Sweden with all this. But let's not declare war just yet. We should People probably wait until all these guys are in sure. position. And let's go, people. So how many turns do we need to get here? Okay, 12 turns. That is quite a lot. We could wait 12 turns. I don't know about that. It's a lot of turns, but that's five swordsmen. It is a lot of swordsmen. And we got another envoy. Can we get this city right here? No. Never mind. We can get Kumasi, however. It's right there. And get even more swordsmen. Holy crap, this is actually insane! I need 240 gold. Surely we can sell something. Hello there. I could even sell my diplomatic favor, to be honest. <laughs> is he going to buy horses? And no. Okay, what about Maori? Let's declare friendship. Don't send the delegation just yet, there's no need. I need the money. Well, let's sell 18. 18 horses for 92 gold. Works for me. Enjoy your horses. So now we can levy troops from Kumasi. It is quite a lot of gold. But there we go. Now we can upgrade them to swordsmen. This is actually insane. Like, holy crap. Look at how many swordsmen this is. There's no way to ever have this many swordsmen at this stage of the game. This is turn 66. And I got like, I don't know, 12 swordsmen? That's actually nuts. Okay then. So upgrade. And upgrade. Obviously the downside is that we only have them temporarily. But still, 30 turns is plenty. So another one, let's go. You know, I wasn't convinced Hungary will be a good save, but now this is actually insane. It's the fact that you can upgrade these units for free. You don't even need the resources. All you need is the technology. We got like 200 iron worth of swordsmen. It's crazy. This is actually crazy. Alright, let's go, people. We could probably go to war with two different sieves simultaneously, but let's not go overboard. We will focus on Sweden specifically. Oh hey, Sweden wants to buy more horses. Uh, I'm not sure if we should be selling horses to Sweden, to be honest. But she will give us some gold. How much is that going to be? Okay, 107. You know, looking at all this, it makes me glad that the AI in Civilization 6 is a little bit dense. Because imagine if the AI was able to take full advantage of this. You would be screwed. Alright, let's just send them like so. Yeah, it will take them a while to get there. I might not wait for all of them. They can just arrive as reinforcements or something. Oh, and hey, we got a promotion. Let's grab that. This fella. I think that's mine. Yep, that's actually my unit right there. And we'll grab a builder in our capital. You can heal back to full. And let's go. Yeah, it's a shame these two city-states weren't a little bit closer to Sweden. Because we could have declared war already. But let's wait just a little bit longer. And this will be the city. Okay, sure, that's the city. And we can improve the iron as soon as we get the builder. And we could actually get started on a campus right here. We could get a better bonus on a different tile, but we will get a 50% production bonus if we build it here. And it's only two signs. Let's just build it here with the production bonus. Okay, sounds good. So, see you when I'm ready to actually declare war here. Uh, although, honestly, we could just declare war right now. We got four swordsmen here already. 
I feel like that's enough, honestly. Alright, I'm just going to declare war right away. Maybe on the next turn, we can move into slightly better positions. The other units can arrive later as reinforcements, but I'd like to get started on actually attacking this city. Honestly, four swordsmen might just be enough. And our other guys will get there relatively quickly. We got a road. That road will actually come in handy right about now. Yeah, that road will be so useful right now. Uh, you can go into the city, like so. Okay, looks good. Also, even if we don't use these units, we got more envoys. So if we look at the city-state breakdown, we got 6 envoys in this one, 5 envoys, 5 envoys, and 2. There's no way you can get that many envoys on turn 69 otherwise. You just can't. This is the only way, as Hungary. Alright, one more turn and then we can declare war. We can also plunder that trade route. Yeah, just declare war right away. It's fine. There, done. Okay, and let's go take the city. Loyalty might be a bit of a problem, but I mean, we can always raise the city. There's no problem with that. And not only we got all these swordsmen, they got plus 5 combat strength from the Raven King trade. And more movement. They are actually insane. This is nuts. This might actually be one of the stronger domination civilizations in the game right now. Especially in the early game, but not just in the early game. Anyway, let's keep moving. I'm not even counting how many swordsmen I have. Yeah, these guys as well. We can send like one of them west or something like that, just to scout the area. It's not like I need all of them, I seriously do not. And they might miss all the action by the time they get here. Yeah, Sweden is about to have a bad time. Sorry Sweden, nothing personal. Here, I'll take your gold, thank you very much. And let's attack the city. Let's put it under siege, so we need to move a little bit. Over here, there, now it's under siege, and we can attack it. She doesn't have city walls in here, so it's basically about to be ours. I won't even need all these other swordsmen. This is actually insane, like seriously, this is insane. Nice try, Sweden. How's that working out for you? Alright, so do we keep the city or do we raise it? A loyalty pressure will be a problem. We should probably raise it. Because there's no way I will be able to maintain loyalty in here. Even if I send a governor, it's just not going to happen. We can try to take Stockholm. Alright, yeah, we are going to raise this city. There's just no point keeping it. Loyalty pressure will be too much. And there it is. So, before we decide, let's check loyalty. Yeah, look at this. Minus 10.5 pressure from nearby citizens. That's obviously not going to happen. We will get 225 grievances against Sweden if we raise it. Sure, why not? Let's raise it. Okay then. And let's keep pushing. I wonder if we can just wipe out Sweden before we lose the units. We got 21 more turns. I don't think we can do it in 21 turns. But hey, I'll see just how much I can do in 21 turns. Not to mention we can save up the gold and then just levy units again in 21 turns. No problem doing that. Alright then, upgrade this fella. And let's take a look around. We found the Ottomans. Okay, good to know. I could totally grab some of these swordsmen and attack the Ottomans right now. But I want to focus on Sweden specifically. I almost feel sorry for them. But not quite. Okay, more units are almost there. Uh, let's maybe heal them up before we move in. Yeah, delegation is fine. No hour of life is There's wasted. horseback riding. Oh, and we got some promotions. Perfect. So that will also be a heal. The extra movement is also pretty crazy. Nice general. Okay, let's get battle cry. Uh, this guy didn't get the promotion. Uh, this guy did. So let's move from two different directions. Battle cry. And let's keep moving. I could probably attack more than one city at the same time. 
All right, yeah, let's keep moving. That road is so helpful right now. <laughs> and that was the road built by Sweden. This wasn't mine. This one is mine, to Buenos Aires. This was the Swedish trader. I bet they regret doing that. So, masonry. And let's continue. This is fun. But seriously, this is actually insane. It's nuts. I thought it might be pretty good, but this is crazy. Okay, yeah, she's trying. Nice try, Sweden. You have inflicted grievances on others. That wasn't me, that was the city-states, clearly. <laughs> That's not my units. You're saying things that aren't there. Alright then, you know, I don't even mind if I lose some of these guys, because, I mean, we lost them eventually anyway. They are not permanent. Which means we can afford to be way more aggressive here. Way more aggressive. Alright, let's keep moving. We can take this city first. Because it only has 10 combat strength. And we just raise it. By the way, this is going to be a crap ton of grievances. But I'm not doing this to optimize grievances. I'm doing this just to see how much damage we can do in a short time period. We can also pillage some of these improvements around Stockholm. Alright, let's keep moving. Uh, that's a builder, actually. Okay. Go, go, go. Yeah, I got so many in here. These two guys are going to be a little bit too late to the party. Just slightly. Each of us is carving a There's masonry. Now, the thing about Hungary is that you will need really good income. Because levying troops from city-states can get pretty expensive. It depends on how many units they have and what kinds of units these are. Right, research is going to be... Let's get sailing, that's only two turns to finish. And kill this. We can fortify the swordsman, actually we get a promotion. So, battle cry. Onwards! This is the craziest blitz I've ever done. In Civ 6, or maybe even in any Civ game ever. It's actually insane. Okay, onwards. More swordsmen, because why the heck not? Poor Sweden. Alright, I think we're done on this turn. Let's move in. We can start attacking Stockholm. It doesn't have a whole lot of strength. Okay, we can explore this area a little bit. Nice slinger. 325 grievances. Yeah, I'm going to have so many grievances. Uh, yeah, let's kill the warrior. We can pick up the promotion later. And keep moving. Kill all of these. And the slinger as well. Here, he's down. Okay, let's move on. We might as well pillage the improvements because I will be raising the cities anyway, I think. Well, we don't have to raise all of them. We can capture some. We'll see about that. We obviously have to capture Stockholm. Because you can't raise a capital city. Battle cry. Alright, let's see how much damage we'll do. Yeah, we can take it with just two guys. Okay, he's going down. This is such an overkill. Like, this is an insane overkill. Yeah. I definitely didn't have to levy all of these. <laughs> but it's fun! It's hilarious! Totally balanced. It's perfectly balanced. Like all things should be. Vessels large They're sailing. And the defensive tactics. Alright, let's do this. We can take Stockholm. So let's do that right away. Keep it, obviously. Again, we can't raise it. And then... Let's see. Repair all of this. Just queue it up. Okay, do we want to get a governor? We might as well get Magnus or so, or maybe Liang. We will need reinforced materials. So let's get Liang, and I'll just move Liang to Stockholm. Sure, let's do that. Yeah, we will probably have to retake it after it rebels. But you know what, that's fine. We got plenty of units to do that with. It's not exactly a problem. The only problem is that Liang will not arrive here in time. Yeah. Well, hold on. We can lower the pressure by raising other cities. So how about we do that? Here, this one is already down. I'm just going to raise this one, I think. Because if I don't, then it will flip. 
the other option is just taking the other cities before this one rebels. It's a possibility. Okay, let's try to keep it. We got 11 turns to take everything. Construction. And we got 16 turns before we lose all of these units. And more swordsmen coming. Yeah, these guys are going to be just a little bit late to the party. Slightly late. Well, they might still be useful for something. Okay, keep going. Just chill around here because Stockholm will definitely rebel. I only got three turns. Not a whole lot of time. Oh, a volcano blew up. I wasn't even paying attention to that. Uh, that's Buenos Aires. Because there's also a volcano right here. There would have been like an entire event if that was the one. Alright, let's keep moving people. So this one. And then one more city. And then we will completely wipe out Sweden. Go, go, go. How many turns here? Eight turns. Okay. Let's keep an archer over there. Maybe we can do this before Stockholm flips. No, it will flip on the next turn, literally. Alright, fine. No problem. We'll just do it again. Not exactly hard, is it? No, not really. You can heal up. And yeah, I can't put this guy on auto explore. Yeah, I actually can. That's our scout. Are we done moving these guys around yet? Here. That will do. Next. So Stockholm is... Oh no! Actually, it's going up now. Alright then. I'm okay with that. Promotion available. Nice. Let's grab that promotion. Commando. And move in. Yep, we are about to wipe out Sweden. Holy crap, this is the fastest I ever eliminated a sieve. That's actually insane. Keep the city. And... Just queue up anything. We are almost done here. Any point moving this guy? How many more turns do we have? We got 17 turns. I think Sweden is on the last city now. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen when we completely eliminate a sieve. With grievances, that is. I assume they go away. I mean, I guess we'll find out. Because I'm pretty sure this is their last city right now. So let's find out what happens with that. Because you get penalized, or rather, other thieves will change their opinion of you based on how many grievances you inflicted. But if there's no sieve that you inflicted grievances on, does that still happen? Let's find out! They can't have a grievance against you if they don't exist, right? Oh, they managed to build a wall. I mean, we are still going to take care of that. I got so many swordsmen that I can just throw them at that city. We don't even need a battering ram, to be honest. Why would we need a battering ram? Full loyalty. It's totally fine. Yep, we can do this without a battering ram. Hello there! Okay. This is actually scary. <laughs> this is insane! I mean, I know I said it already, but seriously, this is insane. It's crazy. I think I saw a scout to the west. Barbarian scout. Right here. Uh, that shouldn't really be a concern. No idea why that guy embarked, but whatever floats his boat. So move in and let's attack. We lost some of these guys, but again, we are going to lose them anyway. Because they are temporary one way or the other. Here. That's the real carpet of doom. Like, look at this. <laughs> There's a swordsman on every single tile within two tiles of that city. Water meal. Alright, let's finish this. And are the other cities fine? 91 turns? Yeah, they are fine. I mean, there's no pressure left, really. So this is totally fine. No problem whatsoever. Okay, no idea where this guy is going, but he's not going to get there. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you go this way. Next. Get the ivory, yes. More amenities for us. The campus is almost done. And I'm pretty sure we only need like two more turns for this. 
There it is. Nice. We eliminated Sweden. This was actually insane. Like, holy crap. The number of people living in your empire is truly impressive. Why, thank you. Plus five era score. Sweden did not stand the test of time. No, it didn't indeed. So keep the city. And there it is. So we got what? Seven cities right now and I raised one. Let's check our diplomatic status with the Ottomans, for example. 114 grievances against them. Okay. They denounced us. I have no idea why. Minus 40, unknown reason. Minus 40, grievances inflicted on other players. Okay, so that doesn't go away. But hey, we are still friendly with them. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this showcase of how crazy insane Hungary is. I thought they might be pretty good with the right start, but I never expected this. This was just an insane snowball. In any case, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, or a dislike if you didn't, and subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.